Hey guys, what's up? I thought I'd do a, I guess it's an update video on my boat. Um, one year. I've changed, I've added a lot of stuff to it. I'm gonna try and make this more of a shotgun type instead of my usual rambling on for three hours video. And uh, I'll show you some of the stuff I've done. Um, a lot of cleanup stuff, eh? A lot of tidying. Um, one thing with a boat, if things aren't secured, they come loose. Pounding on the waves and everything, it, uh, so, so a lot of it, some of it was redoing some stuff a little more solid than that. But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's have a look what I've changed. So looking at the motor at the back here, I've uh, I've put on this this Tough Skins uh, vented motor cover. Um, it stays on the boat. It's got a microfiber cloth on the inside. Looks really nice. It's got factory um, matched graphics, so it looks the same as it would if the cover wasn't on. That's the motor painting on there um yeah i like this thing you leave it on if i want i can take it off i highway the boat an awful lot and uh stone chips and stuff get in the top there when you're on the highway so i think this looks a lot better and uh yeah give me some protection third motor i've had uh i want to take care of this one so if we move along down to the prop area here we've got a uh, obviously i've shown you this before but i've gone with the four blade bravo one it's the best bang for everything on this boat uh, rpms everything uh it bites the water really good the turning their cornering is good uh, when you get out in the waves it, it stays bit into the water so you don't have that like you're coming out of the water there's no uh surge or anything on the motor i love it i've also put on the bottom there a skeg guard that skeg guard is from uh, uh keel guard specific to this prop or to this skeg on this motor and uh you know guys have different opinions on it i've run it on the last the, the last boat and this boat now i have no issues if you hit something at speed they say it's because it's there's no give to it unlike the aluminum it'll rip your bottom end right off I, more often than not i tend to bang the the skeg while i'm trolling and that puts nicks and grooves in it makes it less efficient I'd rather keep this on here if I bang it up trolling. I can literally unscrew those two screws, take it off, put another one on. So I'm going to stick with uh, stick with this. I think it looks better personally. Not everybody agrees, but pretty much that's how I've done the motor up. So looking at the transducers here again, I've never really fully explained it, but the one on the left, that's in uh, the 3-in-1 Lowrance transducer. The one on the right is an Airmar TM 150. Um, I separate out the so there is sonar in the Lowrance transducer but it doesn't work as well on plane I just don't like it. it's high chirp it does work good I like to get that reading on plane when I'm barreling down the lake just to see what's under me um, that's only the the TM 150 is only medium chirp I think they have a high chirp version now the TM 165 um, these brackets are aftermarket they're uh, Rytec marine they're a little pricey but holy smack they're they're solid as a rock solid as a rock i love them they look nice they're more durable uh you tighten those bolts up and that thing ain't moving and that's the way i like it again i don't i've never run into banging them off or out of place so i guess there's guys depending on what water you fish that have that issue i don't so uh i think those look really good on the back there so you can see in the back here i've uh i've tidied up the wiring or the the wiring quite a bit I now have a mercury rigging kit instead of before it was the uh it was a mess i i you know i like the dealer i use but some of the stuff they do I, I don't understand how they rig some of these things so i got this this is this is about three or four hours of solid work um actually longer because i had to order new throttle cables because the ones weren't long enough when i rerouted them that was a pain in the ass it's it's all doable it's not too bad but uh looks a lot cleaner back here so what i'm left with is the two transducer wires coming up the power uh, hydraulic steering uh, tubes coming out there and then this um, the only thing i cheated on is the fuel um, if you can see in the back of these they have uh, two two nipples that stick out for you to attach there's one for the kicker and auxiliary and a possible kicker and then there's one that's for the uh the main fuel 
Um, I could have unbolted the bolt and I could have run it inside and stuff, but I wanted it ac accessible, so I opted to leave it. Um, I, I ran this hose into the, into the tube here. It's not the best looking thing, but th I'm happy with it. I, j I just wanted to keep it accessible in case I needed to remove it or something. I don't want to get too carried away, but overall I think it looked, turned out pretty good. All right, if we look here, I've added a, uh, I've always wanted one of these on my boat. I, I added it actually at the beginning of last summer. It's a carver. Um, it's custom for this specific model of boat. I, uh, I set it up to do a bit of an angle, um, uh, partly because it looks better and partly because this is where it had to sit so that it, you know, it sat evenly with the motor back there and out of the way so that the flip seat here still works. It's not in the way at all. When I fold this flip down, I still have my full, my full rear casting deck. It doesn't affect anything at the GPS antennas over there. It doesn't affect that at all. I ran it all last summer. Um, very happy with it. Seems pretty solid. It, uh, I'd say it's 90% on the rain and it's definitely 100% on the sun. So, you know, when the sun's beating down, it's amazing to sort of sit under it, grab a drink out of the cooler and cool down a bit between, uh, between casts. So pretty impressed with that. I'm pretty happy with the console now. Everything's, uh, everything's cleaned up again. The, the issue with these, and some people use one that, that's sort of a swing that's mounted more solid. You, you have to crank this pretty tight. A nine inch though isn't really heavy enough. If you crank it tight, it's a non-issue. I like how they both sit here. My visibility's fine with them kind of angled right here on the side. And uh, very happy with it. Very happy with the vessel view. I've got the fuel working now so that it calculates my fuel and everything. So full control of that rear motor on these screens as well. Yeah, can't complain, man. Rytec Marine makes these brackets. They're aftermarket brackets. I had one that was BBT and one that was Rytec. I got rid of the one BBT one here and uh, they're both matching now. They're both Rytec Marine. Pretty impressed. Reran a lot of stuff because I also added an underwater camera. Friggin' amazing, eh? So, oh, a power switch there, it's just mounted in here. The, the AV and everything goes up there. This here plugs into the camera itself. Records here, I keep the camera in a box back there, it's AquaView. And uh, a 75 feet of cable. And it pulls right up on my fish finder screen. So there's one icon that's video. When I click that, when it's plugged in and powered on, boom. It's uh, this one's 720p um, because these screens are only basically 720p. So there wasn't a lot of point to me going 1080 on them. Uh, if you have an HDS 12 or 16, you can go to a 1080 camera. It's probably four or five hundred dollars more, but that'll that'll work better. But uh, other than that, I haven't done a lot to the console area here. It's uh, pretty much the same. I also did a lot of cleaning up with the wires under there. I don't know if this is showing up very well or not, but the wiring is, uh, it's, you do what you can, eh? There's so much of it. I try to keep it as organized as I can, tucked out of the way. Um, another thing I did is I moved the fire extinguisher over here. I used to have it mounted on the back of the boat but that wasn't such a good idea because when people sit in that seat which is what happened their foot kicked it off broke the bracket the pain in the butt trying to get a new bracket so uh fire extinguisher has moved up there now so going up front here i got all of the electronics in the xi5 replaced under warranty it was give it was being a pain in the ass this is the second motor i've had the first one worked flawlessly i'm hoping that that'll fix the problem um, according to the tech everyone he's done He's had no complaints going forward, so I'm hoping that fixes, uh, fixes that issue. I got a new prop on the motor for this year. Obviously, I still have my live unit up front here that's hooked into the transducer for this motor. And uh, yeah, not much else. Well, I did, and I also, and this is something I did because I don't remove it. It's not removable. I've permanently wired it and I have a toggle switch here. It's a 60 amp toggle switch, more than enough uh, to handle it. And you power the motor on, 
can see all the lights coming on there and it's uh to me way cleaner up front here there this cable used to come down plug into here dangle around when i'm done now i power this off it cuts the power right to it right right from the batteries into there it's all fused properly and everything so i'm i really like this we'll see how it stands up in the weather i may have to get more of a marine type of switch i mean that's not a big deal to change the switch if this one doesn't work but i put it in probably the end of last summer i've been out a few times all winter now it's still fine so um yeah other than that no changes really up on the front of the boat here either i've i've organized these a little better now um this one here's sort of safety supplies first aid tools um you know the boating any any boating flashlight i try to keep it i got stopped by the mnr and uh the opp here in ontario and I noticed it was a pain in the ass because I was looking all over the boat for stuff and the guy did make a comment about how, gee, if you need it, uh, good good luck finding it. So I, I took his suggestion and I've organized it up a lot better now. And there I got the underwater camera. You can see it's uh, spooled up here. Uh, you know, the, the trolling, uh, all kinds of stuff in there. Um, that's again, boat gear and stuff that I keep in there. I didn't show you in the last video, um, this is the rod storage, so there's eight eight foot rods that can fit in there, or seven six on the bottom, sorry, eight foot on the top, I don't think any of them are even that long, I'm a, I'm a rod or two short right now, uh, you know, some of them break, I've, I've sort of combined a couple to make one good one here, so I have seven in total in here, so I have room for a couple more in there if I need it. Um, that's all my sort of bass walleye any, any any kind of fishing like that stuff in here the uh the batteries are under the floor there the two group 31s for the, the xi5 up front and this of course is lockable which is pretty handy and then we go over here and those are my musky rods i got two trolling and two uh tranks 400 uh or 401 for casting there with two I think they're are they eight foot yeah I think they're eight foot rods two eight foot casting rods there for uh, for the musky stuff I got a paddle in there coming up front here um, I readjusted this the dealer didn't they had it set way down low um, which meant that this here harness was banging on the bottom of this yellow snubber here and and wrecking it and it wasn't sitting right so there's a couple bolts here you can readjust and this whole arm can sort of pivot here and you get it at the exact right height that's about all i've done here but it's uh saved me some grief here when i'm hooking it up at the end of the day i've switched the bungee cords to hold on the uh the tarp for when I'm trailering on the highway. Um, the problem was with the other way, it came down off of here, <clears throat> down to here, and it wrapped around the this beam. And the problem was it was wearing away at the boat a little bit here. So uh, what I've done is moved it away from the boat, and I've installed these little hooks on either side um, now when I go, I've tested it out on the highway now, and uh, these don't really vibrate because they're round, unlike the flat strap. So you don't get them rubbing against the boat or anything like that. It's just an extra safety. Some people take them off completely. I've left it on because it, it tends to ride up a little bit, mostly because this cover isn't designed for my bimini top. So it, it rides up a little bit. So I've got to keep the extra safety on there. Even little details like this little cleat here. You take the rope out of the water here and I swing it up around here. You pull it in and it's got little angled teeth here so that you just lay the rope in there and it can't, can't pull back. So, you know, on and off the dock, you just come up front, grab the rope, lay it in there, you're done. So I like little details like this. So yeah, I, I'm pretty, I think I've done all the stuff that I want to do on this. It's uh. I really can't think of anything else. Like, what else can I really add to this? It's, uh, I don't have room to add anymore, really. I mean, I've, uh, I've, I've cleaned up a lot of stuff here. I've cleaned up a lot of the wiring. 
anything that rattled loose. The trolling motor rattled loose, so one of the things I had to do was re uh, rebolt the uh, the board, tighten everything up that's on top that the trolling motor is mounted to, and then uh, I, I obviously change the bolts and it's more secure on the front there it, it wiggles loose eh? it you could get a holder but it doesn't really work with the with the tarp that I have I, I tarp it when I highway drive which a lot of people don't do I <laughs> I don't know man I, I always elect for a little bit more pain in the ass to make sure that something get doesn't get destroyed I'm fine with that it's an extra five minutes at the boat launch but um, yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, pretty much a good show of everything. I'm gonna do more videos this summer. I promise. I'm gonna do uh, my spring trip is in a week, two weeks today. Say Friday. Yeah, two weeks today, and that's gonna be ten days uh, up up at my uh, up at my northern northern lake that I go to every spring. So I'm definitely going to do some videos and try and get more creative with that. And I'm going to go from there this summer. We'll see with this this pandemic stuff how much I can actually get out or how much I do get out. But uh, but uh, that's a little update on the boat anyway, guys. I'm uh, pretty thrilled with it, obviously. I say that about every boat I have. I mean, I'm thrilled. I, if, I, if I'm out in the water, I'm thrilled. Simple as that, man. Anyway, all right, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.